and today we are just going to be reviewing the puppet pin tool in After Effects. This tool is actually going to allow you to treat your character or your figure like a puppet uh, through the use of pins and keyframes. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to select our figure layer, which is completely separate from our background layer. Alright, and we are going to go up to the top of our toolbar in After Effects and we're going to go to the puppet pin tool. Now essentially what this does is it allows you to add points on your character and as you add each point you're going to have a mesh that's created over top of your layer made up of triangles. This is going to allow you to bend your character. All right? uh, we're just going to add points at our wrists, our shoulders, right at the belt line, the knees, the heels, the toes, essentially wherever we're going to want to move this layer. So at the base of our chin and the very top of our head. Now as you can see we have all these triangles and we have this setting up here. This is going to allow us to increase the amount of triangles or decrease the amount of triangles. For right now we're just going to stick with 250 and that'll be a smooth enough motion. We also have show mesh, so if I have my puppet effect selected and I hover over top of my layer, you're going to see that mesh. You can also turn that off to where you just see the puppet pins. We can see where that mesh is on the outside of our character. So we can decrease the expansion of that mesh and it's going to get a lot closer to our layer. Or we can increase the expansion, which is going to further that away from our character. All right, so right now we're just going to set that mesh to three. That way it's encompassing the layer for the most part, and we'll be able to move that pretty smoothly. So starting with our playhead at zero seconds in zero frames, what we're going to do is we're actually going to click and start moving this pin tool. All right, so you can see you can kind of wave that character around or that pin around, which is going to allow you to move those limbs. What you're going to do is you're going to hold in command and you're going to start moving that arm. All right, so holding in command and then clicking and dragging that pin, you'll notice that the effect or that mesh outline is going to keep moving with you and it's highlighted and that playhead is going to continue to move and you can see on your timeline all of these keyframes are added as well as these paths. So essentially what we just did is holding in command and clicking and dragging that pin records the motion and sets keyframes automatically. All right, so I'm going to undo that. That's one way that we can animate our character. We can also drop down our mesh and we can go to deform and that's going to show all of our pin tools, all right, our pin points. So if I select a point and I drop that down, I can also add keyframes that way. So at zero seconds, we have a keyframe. And at five seconds, if I dr just drag this pin down, that's gonna automatically add another keyframe. So between zero and five seconds, we're gonna have that arm moving downward. Okay, so those are the two ways that you can actually add keyframes or animate the pin tool. <clears throat> so for right now, we're just going to start out by moving that arm. All right, so setting our playhead to zero seconds, zero frames, holding in command, you'll notice the little stopwatch pops up. And we're just gonna click and start waving this arm. Okay, for about five seconds. And we have that motion recorded. Now we're getting kind of bendy with our arm and it's looking a little rubbery as you notice on this side. All right, so what we need to do is actually pinpoint places with the puppet starch tool that are going to stay in place they're not going to bend or stretch all right so with that we'll see the original outline or mesh of our character and we're going to pin between the shoulder and the elbow all right and we're going to show that mesh now with the amount and the extent this is actually going to be the amount that it is restrained Okay, and we can actually extend that outward. With the extension, you can see what parts of that mesh are actually going to be kept in place. So that way, whenever I return to my puppet pin tool, you'll notice that the upper part of the arm between the elbow and the shoulder is actually staying in place a lot better. 
So let's go ahead and pin that starch tool uh, with the arm we already animated. Okay, and that's going to straighten everything out between the shoulder and the elbow. And we're going to do the same thing with the wrist and the elbow. But we're going to want to take that extension down because we don't want that arm to be completely stiff like a 2x4. Alright, so everything's staying in place a lot better there. And it's looking a lot less rubbery. So the other tool that we have is the puppet overlap tool. Now if we go to our puppet pin tool and we start to drag this hand in front of my waist, it's by default going to be in front of the waist, which is great. But if I return and we go ahead and grab this puppet overlap tool, and for whatever reason, if we wanted the waist to be in front of the arm when we animate that, we could just set our pin there. And the same thing goes for this. Uh, we have 50% in front, so that should be good with that other arm, considering we have an added uh, overlap pin for that part of the body. And we're going to actually extend that out. So the body is essentially going to be in front of this arm whenever we move it behind. All right. So now you can see that we added our point, our overlap point, and we put a 50% in front and extension of 150. So it's covering this whole body. So our arm's going to be going behind that body. All right. So holding in command and we click on that pin tool we can start tapping that foot and you're actually going to notice the arm is still moving around in the mesh so you can kind of see the animation that's already taking place so we can have that foot tapping as the arms waving looks pretty goofy uh, but for right now it's just to get the idea of motion down with this puppet pin tool alright and if at any time you want to delete your puppet pin tool all you have to do is drop down that layer click on that effect and we can just hit delete and it's going to return back to normal. So you can use this for a number of ways to animate characters within After Effects. You just have to make sure that you're utilizing all three of the puppet tools uh, just so we don't have wonky animations or rubbery looking characters moving around. And it's going to allow you to make characters look as if they're running or doing other activities where you need to overlap the arms in front of the body or behind the body. So we have our puppet pin tool, which allows us to add points to our character and all of the settings at the top. We have our puppet overlap tool, which is going to allow us to indicate what parts of the layer we want to overlap other parts of the layer with our settings there. And we also have our puppet starch tool, which is going to allow us to keep parts of this layer in place while the rest of the layer is actually moving about as if it is animated. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick tutorial on the Puppet Tool in After Effects. Uh, check back next time for more tutorials in After Effects and other products concerning motion graphics and animation. Have a great day, guys.